when I turn on the coffee maker as I start this video I'm on my solar panels. I just take a little walk out into my garden. They're not all that visible from here. I'll take you up to them and see if I can uh, explain this uh, without making too many mistakes. Up here, mounted on L brackets, are my solar panels on the fence. This is the amorphous solar panels. Uh, this solar panel actually, also amorphous, is about 15 years old and still uh, kicking out 85%. I have to go around my apple tree for the last one. So it totals out 75 watts, it's 5 15 watt solar panels. I chose the amorphous cells as I live in a really, really shady location. I do have some sun straight up, but very lot of shade is dappled sunshine at best, and the amorphous solar panels perform uh, best at this. All the wires come to this one junction, which I've run into an extension cord, an old one, uh, soldered all the connections for, for good connection. Um, I've buried the wire under some grass trimmings in my little pathway to protect it. I have to dig it up every year and take a look and make sure it's not uh, got any cuts or anything in it. I don't mind using that method um, because it's very low voltage. This is my battery box, as you see the wires go in under here. That's where the ventilation is. If I lift the lid up to the box, see inside, I have one to be expanded, of course. Kirkland Deep Cycle 95 amp power uh, marine battery. Got room for four more, which is going to help me later on. You have to use a deep cycle battery because the sulfuric acid in the car battery is going to kill, erode all the plates inside if it's discharged. So you have to leave a car battery fully charged where a deep cycle is built to take a certain amount of discharge. This is the wire coming from the solar panel, another soldered connections. It goes into a 7 amp charge controller. I'm running 5 amps solar panels, so it doesn't exactly tell me any amperage on these little charge controllers. They're very, very cheap and small. It just tells you if it's charging or if it's charged. Um, and basically, this is to keep the solar panels from overcharging the deep cycle battery, which is also another no-no. Alligator clips go to my power inverter. I'll close. It is a 600 watt Suprex power inverter. Two receptacles, power switch. It's actually running in thread because it's a 600 watt coffee maker. So if the power goes out, I can bring my coffee maker outside, or if it's raining, I just run a cord inside. And I'll get back to my battery box over here. We live in an area that gets about minus 18. There's a maximum cold, which is as low as most of these deep cycle batteries were ever built for. So I'm moving the top of my chest over so you can see underneath. Underneath I've dug some deep holes. Can't see them too far, the second set of holes. This is to get a little bit of the geothermal heat, a little bit of heat from underneath in the ground that's there all season. So when it's frosty on, up top, that'll be, uh, have a little bit of heat come from the ground. So anything I can do to protect even one degree 
of protection to those batteries. A couple more degrees being in a box, another degree maybe having styrofoam around it. So that should uh, give me ample protection. Anyways, I'm going to go enjoy a coffee. Thank you for watching.